So the very first thing I'm going to do, Jenna, is I'm actually going to just um, get the little device. They come for us prefabricated. And I'm actually just going to position it over your teeth and have you just bite your teeth together so I can see how it works. And go ahead and bite for me. So what I'm doing with my quick splint, I'm going to have you open for me, Jenna, is when we think about the quick splint, you can see that it's just a little prefabricated shell. It actually has two little holes in it that help us with retention of the material that we're going to use to custom fit it. It also has another slit in the anterior right at the midline, again designed so that we can get retention of the material. And what I want to do first is I'm going to just try it in. I'm trying it in for two reasons. Number one, I want Jenna to get to experience having it in her mouth and then actually biting against it so that when we do that already with the bite registration material in it, she's familiar with what I'm going to ask her to do. I'm also just visually getting a reference for positioning it over her teeth. I actually do want this little slit at her midline. I also want to make sure this anterior flange of my quick splint is as close to the labial of her upper teeth as I can get it without it actually touching her teeth. I actually do need some of the bite registration material on that labial. So I'm getting a sense of how I can position it. And then the last thing for me is when I ask Jenna to bite, so she's practicing what I'm going to ask her to do. Um, I'm also seeing how do her lower teeth come in contact with the quick splint. What I'd ultimately like to make sure is um, that we don't have back teeth touching and that I'm going to get even contacts both on the right side and the left side once the material is set. So now that we've tried this in, Jenna, I'm actually going to put a material in here that is the same stuff that we use when we take impressions of your, of your mouth to get models of your teeth. And it's a little bit gooey when I first put it in. It doesn't have a bad taste. And then I'm going to put this over your teeth. I'm going to ask you again to sort of gently bite together for me. And then we're going to hold that. This material actually sets relatively quickly. But we're going to leave it on your teeth until it gets to a hard set. Okay? Okay. All right. So your quick splints, um, you can reline with um, bite registration material or other types of silicone putty. Today we're actually just going to use the bite registration material. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just fill the quick splint shell with the bite registration material. I do want to fill it. I actually like this material to go kind of right up to the top of the white part of the quick splint, but I don't want to overfill it. I'm going to have Jenna open for me again. I'm lining this up with the midline, positioning the anterior of the flange, and then I'm going to ask Jenna to gently close for me. And again, I'm eyeballing and making sure that I've got a contact on both sides, but that her back teeth are not touching. And now we simply just have to hold it in place until the material sets. So now that our bite registration material has set completely, I'm going to just ask Jenna to open her teeth for me. And once she opens, I can just pop this off of her upper teeth, and I've got a relined quick splint. If Jenna has material between her teeth, we can go ahead and floss her teeth and we can get that out for her. And the next thing for me is I'm going to trim off the excess material on the quick splint. I don't want to carve it out of the areas that are designed for retention, but I do want to trim this material back so that when Jenna moves her bottom teeth around, she goes into her excursives. She's not actually getting stuck on the bite registration. It's not creating any rough spots for her to guide over. And we simply do that with a disposable Barb Parker or a blade and then we're going to come back and we're just going to give this to Jenna with some quick instructions. So I'm just trimming off the excess that's on the lingual of the quick splint. I'm not shortening it but I'm making sure that it's flush with the white plastic so that it's not an irritant to Jenna's tongue. Um, why am I not shortening it? Because it's going to actually help me with retention. I also then trim it flush on the distal um, using the platform again as a as a guide using the um, quick splint as the guide for where I want to trim my bite registration in this anterior in the midline I want to make sure that this is trimmed flush but I don't want to dig it out because it's going to help hold the bite registration um, for me I actually typically just will either use my finger or the blade to sort of make sure that it's nice and smooth And the same thing on the anterior, if we have material that's gone out over the labial of the quick splint, 
we can trim that as well so that um, Jenna's upper lip isn't being caught on that. And we're gonna try to make it as comfortable as possible. Once we have it trimmed, I'm gonna take it back in and I'm gonna try it in. And I'm gonna make sure that I've got enough retention. And I actually like the fact that when I put it in, I can just feel a tiny little snap where the bite registration is locking in a little bit over Jenna's teeth. And I can just have her bite again for me and I can verify that I do have contact on both of her canine cusp tips, but none of her back teeth are touching. And quick and simple, we've fabricated a quick splint so that Jenna can have that during her procedure if I want her to rest on it. She can have that to take home after her procedure as part of her home care protocol. And if Jenna was already post-op and experiencing some symptoms, we could actually use this as a therapeutic device to help her get better and get past that as quickly and efficiently as possible.